And this is where the privatized prisons, this gets really tenuous because you're literally making money off of taking people in jail, taking away their voting rights, yeah. and then using them for pretty oh, much slave labor. labor yeah, and yeah, which yeah. gets me to my point, this is pretty much like, you know, you take away slavery, they do Jim Crow, or sharecropping. Then they take away sharecropping, they do Jim Crow. Right. You take away that, then now we're at the privatized prison era, the drug war era, where yeah. it's like, oh, we're gonna disproportionately get communities of color, poor people, mm -hmm. put them in jail, we'll make money off of their labor, and then, and not only their labor, but they get paid by the government for like, for filling, filling these quotas yeah, of beds. Yeah. Quotas, yeah. And, and that's all they see, it. for for it's for me and you, it's like, I see you as Arthur and Niles for a cop, it's like, um, filling my quota. Yeah. yeah. And that's why they treat you like that, and it's really disgusting. And there's also racist stuff behind also, it. Yeah. But, but, like, that's part of how they, like, train themselves to see you, and it's like, that's the fucked up part about our criminal system. Yeah. They, and so uh, the documentary that was really good about it, 13th on Netflix by mm -hmm. Eva DuVernay, was amazing. I'm breaking you down how, like you said, this is basically the new form of slavery is criminalization of drugs and um, what they're doing with private prisons because they're for cash profit. Like you said, they have a number they have to hit. I remember uh, the state of Florida a couple months ago was a mm -hmm. prison that needed mm -hmm. to fill 300 beds. And so they were telling black people, don't even leave your house. Yeah, don't, because they're going to get pulled over for any little Exactly. And, and so like they have, like you said, they have to meet a quota. And so when they, you know, I, I, I have, I know people that worked in law enforcement in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they would tell me there were people in then the department that literally just pulled black and brown people just to see if they were fine something. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't happen to white people. It yeah. just doesn't. And if you look at the statistics, um, like how does this tie into marijuana, there are over 100,000 people currently in jail per possession of less than an ounce. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's crazy. And um, like, for instance, that weed right there, that's about a half ounce-ish. Like, we're talking... They had at maximum twice as much as this, and they're still in jail. And still there, yeah. And a hundred thousand people—that is a hundred thousand people times whatever they get from the government in subsidies for filling their quota in beds. And this is where the drug war—you start to understand why it actually is really racist. You know, and it's almost like. Do you feel like they have this helicopter effect over a neighborhood? They're always constantly yeah. watching you, and that's the issue with cops is if you're always in that area, you're going to find something, mm -hmm. especially if you're financially motivated to do so in multiple ways. Yeah. This boy is preaching, damn it. It is. It is. And so, like, out of those hundreds of thousands of people, the majority of them are black and brown. Black and brown. Yeah. And that's, that's mm -hmm. the problem we're hitting at because now weed has become trendy. Uh, we're getting TV shows and documentaries yeah. and movies and states are getting legalized and people, the government and different people, rich white people are making money making off of marijuana now. So, so, so much gonna, money. how are you making money off of a substance that so many people are still in prison for? That's yeah. evil. And it's just like for every show that gets pitched to TV that has some white person playing with marijuana. There's a whole show called Weeds that was an amazing show. It went on for seven seasons about mm -hmm. a white suburban mom that sells weed. So weed, yeah. And so like it was a great show, but then the whole as a black person, the only the only thing I'm thinking about while watching the show is what about all the people that are in prison while I'm laughing at these jokes about weed on this TV show? It's yeah. that real. Yeah. Because yeah, there are a couple hundred thousand people, those are a couple hundred thousand fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, those are real people that have families. I know people that are locked up for a dime bag. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And so these we have to get these politicians to pass laws that you know reverse those things because like i said i just don't understand how people are making money off something that people are still locked up for so how are we a united states if that's the case and how are there a hundred thousand people still in jail a lot of those people are in states that are currently saying that weed is now either medical or recreational why aren't those people in jail pardoned as soon as that exactly. laws happen but like, you're saying essentially they're grandfathered into jail that seems like a really weird technicality so you're very brutal cruel and unusual by you know our words in the constitution and so it's just it's bizarre think about all the people who are felons they can't vote so shouldn't they get their voting rights enacted like reenacted because it's like Okay, you locked us up and said this thing was so bad 
but now all of a sudden now it's, it's good, okay. yeah, it's okay, it's like, and now you're making money off of it. Because there's a thing, there's other crimes, this, this would never happen with murder, it would never happen with rape, it would no. never happen with any crime. This is the only one this is happening because it's not a drug, it's not anything evil or immoral or anything like that. It's a plant from the ground that when used properly can get you higher, even use work in healing. 